just say, okay, hey guys, tomorrow we're going to do no screens. Give your kids some warnings so they can cope <laughs> <laughs> and prepare for the detox. I mean, even what if you even said this whole weekend we're going to do, I mean, crazy, right? But, but prompt them to do that. And, and it's only crazy because screens are the norm. Yeah, it's, it's everywhere. So it does sound a little crazy, I know. But too. it's not. It's, it, not. it's not crazy to have a screen-free day for a child. This is a random podcast right here. Uh, <laughs> we have had things that have popped up this summer that we've thought, oh, we should mention that on the podcast. But then we're like, well, we have talked about that issue. We've got longer form podcasts on some of these topics, but... Hey, these are like, these are good reminders and we've had multiple things and it's like, okay, what do we do? Well, I had a brilliant idea <laughs> and I thought, let's just do three random parenting tips. And these have just been provoked because of things that we've observed in our family. Uh, these are things that, um, areas of improvement I've seen for you, honey. <laughs> um, I mean, so just, uh, <laughs> Three random parenting tips. So these are unrelated random parenting tips <laughs> that uh, are we're going to cover here. So number one, we want to offer this tip free of charge to you families out there. <laughs> Track your family's media habits. And I, I worded that very carefully there because it's not just hey, be aware of screens and technology and social media. No, the specific tip is to track your family's media habits. Maybe do that for a week. Uh, and this is prompted by a, a couple of things. One, it was prompted by me standing in line at a local Costco. I was standing in the tire line because I needed to get my car's tires rotated. And I was standing there and there was a mom holding probably a, a two-year-old and her four or five-year-old was standing next to her. But the whole time he's standing in line, he's got a Nintendo Switch in front of him. He's got a video game. And they're standing in line and he's playing a video game the entire time. And I just thought, uh, gosh, if he's playing the video game in line, I'm guessing... He's playing that video game when he's in the car. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing screens are filling that young four or five year old's life. And again, I just, I wanted, I, I didn't sit Sounding there. Judgy, Conkle. <laughs> I, you sound you, super judgy. <laughs> you, you knew <laughs> what I was going to try to preface. <laughs> you knew the criticism I was going to try to cut off and preempt right now. <laughs> Uh, folks, I was not judgy at all. I, in fact, got down on my knees in line and I started praying for that family. So I was moved to compassion. No, but the observation, just seeing that made me think, goodness. That we see it everywhere we go. Yeah. And, 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 and it was, yeah. it was, he was just a, a young kid, a four year old. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, screens are omnipresent. I know. Okay. And so I'll, in your defense a little bit. Thank you um, for finally coming to my defense, you? Aaron. Uh, this is wrong. It feels wrong. No, I'm but I'm sure that I'm sure people who are listening right now, <laughs> folks, you're you're probably saying to yourself, finally Fine. Aaron Aww. defends her husband. <laughs> but you think about okay, think about that picture of a four year old. Now you have no idea what kind of day that mom's had. She might be tired and and she this, might is, be. this is why I love you, because you balance out my judginess <laughs> with compassion and love yeah. and a, uh, she, a merciful. It's probably the baby's nap time, and she's like, I have <laughs> to get this car into the tire shop so I can go shop really quick. Hopefully, they'll have it done. Okay, so so there's that, and that that's fine. It might be the kid's only time that he was on the thing. But you do think about just that scene of a four or five year old in a tire shop and the Costco tire shop in particular is pretty cool for a kid. I think because they have all these tires stacked mm. up and I, 
So in other words, the child's missing out on, on all of the stimulation that's actually naturally all around them and how the kid's probably missing all of that. And like, oh, do you see the guys? Like, look how strong they are. They just totally picked up that tire, no problem. And all the things that could also be a part of the child's day of just observing and seeing all the things around them. And I think a tire shop for a little boy is probably pretty cool. Yeah. So it, you, you think about how screens rob us sometimes of seeing the natural world all around us. Yeah. And we miss things. And what's making me think that is that actually yesterday I was babysitting our three granddaughters and the sidewalk near our home has been uplifted because of tree roots, this big tree that's lifting up the cement. Okay, so the guys came and tore up the cement. And so it's been torn up. And then they came with this big cement truck and backed it up and then to pour the new sidewalk. So I was in the garage. The girls were playing in the driveway. I was starting some laundry. And the girls see this huge truck pull up. And they're six and a half, five, and one and a half. And the six and a half year old goes, ooh, what's going on? And so they, all three of them, even the one and a half year old sat on our porch for over 30 minutes watching these guys pour cement and lay it out. Mm. You would have thought they were watching like a Disney cartoon. They were completely captivated by these guys pouring cement. It Actually way better cool than a Disney and yeah, entertaining. Movie. So this is what I mean. There's so much that's happening all around. And and oftentimes the screens rob our kids of seeing all of that. And I would have never thought like, oh, today I'll entertain the girls by having them watch cement poured on the mm-hmm. sidewalk in front of our house. Yeah. But it was just a natural thing that happened. We were outside and then they saw this going on. So Well, there's and I think what you bring up is that there's several layers to this. And this is why we need to think carefully about technology, because there's the aspect of, gosh, when a screen is in front of their face, they miss out on life. They miss out on some really good things in life. Then there's the aspect of, well, you, you, have, you put a screen or technology in front of them all the time, they develop an addiction to that thing, an over-reliance on that thing. Then there's the layer of, Yeah, and how is technology forming a young mind? It's developing a distracted mind, uh, and on and on and on. So there's multiple layers, and this is why the, the tip is, okay, number one, we as adults have got to develop an awareness of how much technology has filled our lives because it will creep more and more into our lives at every opportunity. Technology, and we've talked about this before, is not neutral. It's constantly nudging us, pushing us, pulling us to be on it more and more. And so it just has this way of creeping into life. And so track it. Mm -hmm. Look at a typical week and just, you know, use a note on your iPhone. Here's the good of technology. Use a note on your, you know, your smartphone or write it down or whatever and just track. Okay, my, my kid was uh, in line for 15 minutes with me and they were on a screen. Mm-hmm. My car drive to and from, you know, whatever, baseball practice or school or some summer activity. Uh, it was 30 minutes and they, yeah, we had the screens on. And I guarantee, and I, <laughs> just from data on this, we always underestimate the amount of time we're on screens. And so it, this can be an eye-opening thing to do to help maybe shake us back into, all right, we got to get back onto this because mm-hmm. it's easy to slip. Yeah. these, And what we're suggesting is even if you've tracked it before or never done this at all, that you can... You can do it. You can just decide, okay, this week I'm going to track or I'm going to track for the next three days and just kind of get a pulse on where everybody is. And and you should include yourself in this because I just offended you, Kunkel, but now I'm going to throw you under the bus. Oh, because good. 
I'm assuming in that Costco line for tires, knowing you, you tried to cram in a couple emails while you're standing there in line and not really throwing you under the bus. Actually, honey, thank you for your attempt (laughs) to balance out your uh, praise of me in my defense. But what it did for me, uh, honestly, it made you not. It made me put my phone away. Mm -hmm. It made me sit there and think, yeah, and how do I let technology creep into my life? And I thought, you know what? I'm going to stand here in line um, to show this mom up. <laughs> I'm going to show her you can live without it. No, I, but I thought to myself, yep, <laughs> it creeps into my life. And I put my phone in my pocket and I, and I just stood there. And I remember feeling a little bit like, what do, what do I do? You know, and and because I, I this know. is an opportunity to get some work yeah. done. And I'm, I folded my arms. I was looking around. I was watching the workers. <laughs> And uh, I thought, oh, gosh, yeah, it's not just the kids. Because anymore, doesn't that standing in line and not doing anything almost feels like a waste of time. Mm. That's how I feel about it sometimes because it's like, oh, I can respond to these five texts that I still haven't responded to. And you'll use those opportunities. And maybe sometimes that's appropriate. Sure. But Yeah. yeah, I mean, so even tracking our own, can you even stand in line, listener? Or sit at a red light and not feel the urge to grab your phone. Yeah. And I realized I can. (laughs) I can. Thanks to that four-year-old boy. That four-year-old boy taught you something. So So, so do this, especially summertime is good. We're we're kind of now getting towards August, so it's going to be back to school time. So this is a great time to track, evaluate, and just see how your family's doing with screens. Yeah. yeah. Now, the other side of this that we don't, I think, have time to talk about, but is okay. Once you've tracked it, then figuring out a game plan on how to nudge your kids away from mm-hmm. screens. And so that's going to require helping them figure out things to do instead of the screen. And so we're going to have to be proactive on this kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And I think keeping in mind, if, okay, say you you track and you think, oh gosh, okay, in the summer we've gotten in a bad habit. They're watching shows every single day, maybe several hours a day. So then you just say, okay, hey guys, tomorrow we're going to do no screens. Give your kids some warnings so they can cope <laughs> <laughs> and prepare for the detox. I mean, even what if you even said this whole weekend we're going to do, I mean, crazy, right? But but prompt them to do that. And and it's only crazy because screens are the norm. Yeah, it's it's everywhere. So it does sound a little crazy, I know. But too. it's not. It's it, not. It's not crazy to have a screen free day for a child. Screen free week. It's it would be a huge gift to your kids once they got over the initial yeah. um detox of it. It would be a huge gift to them. And, and so being proactive and talking to them about it. And, and one thing I, I thought of when we were talking about this was even if they're spending time with other kids or we had a family over for dinner the other night. And so I prompted the kids and said, Hey, once dinner's over and you know, if you guys are playing outside or swimming, that's great. But if not, then think of a board game you could play with them. And, and that could be a fun thing to do. And so I initiated with our kids to start already thinking about something non-screen to do. And so then sure enough, after dinner and after some, they were playing outside for a while. And then I said to my son, Hey, this would be a good time to do a board game. Did you think of one? And he was like, Oh yeah. And then they played a board game and we had no requests for screens and it, it and ended up. And the kids up, had a blast. They, they were had laughing, such a good cracking time. up. Yeah. So even, I, mm-hmm. I mean, we don't control that other family, but they were over at our house. So we're hosts. So I told the kids, let's, let's be proactive that way. So track screens and then be proactive about thinking about things you can do that are not mm. screen related and suggesting a break. Okay. So that's. Random tip number one, (laughs) random tip number two Mm -hmm. is help your kid get a job Mm. starting when they're 18 months old, old, (laughs) get them a job. (laughs) 
No, th- this is this is prompted by our own kid, our twelve year old son, doing work this summer for a baseball camp here in Southern California, mm-hmm. and it's been uh, it's been enjoyable to watch him do this work, and he's getting paid like ten bucks an hour or something. Uh, but he had to volunteer first and then, yeah, now oh, yeah, he's he, getting paid. Yeah. He had to put in what 40 is it, 50, hours 40 of volunteer, volunteer hours before he even got paid. Mm-hmm. He put in that work. Now he's getting paid and it is just been fun to watch him grow in several things or just to see kind of a, a, a realization. And this is where, you know, we teach, right. And, and a lot of teaching is talking, but that can't be the whole deal. You've got to help your kids experience the truth of what you're saying. And again, right, a biblical worldview tells us from the get-go that work is a good thing. Genesis chapter 1, right, what was, what's referred to as the cultural mandate, the cultural commission, the first command, be fruitful, multiply, and um, subdue the earth and rule over it right? So have families and work, create things, build. And so this is where uh, helping our kids get jobs, letting them get jobs, having them work is a good thing because you can help communicate to them, oh no, work is a good thing. And, and really fly in the face of a entertainment-oriented, pleasure-oriented American culture or Western culture, wherever your, whatever your culture is at, the culture wants to say, oh, you work so that you can actually live the life you want to live. And we want to say, no, actually, the Christian worldview integrates work right into everything that we do. And this thing that you're going to be doing for much of your life, you can actually see it from a biblical worldview, and God says it's good. Work is a good thing. Yeah, and we've we've done whole podcasts on having your kids do chores and work and all these things. And this is our, our 12 year old is our fifth kid. And so the, these are things that I know are true, but having him work this summer is reminding me and what I'm seeing of him of, oh, this is so good. There's things that are so good about having our kids for one accountable to someone else and mm-hmm. having to show up on time and having to do things that they don't want to do or they're tired and yet they still have to do it. And, and of course, receiving money for work is, is such a good thing. Um, and then leadership stuff that we're seeing in our son from helping at this camp where he's having to help okay, with you're, young kids. You're getting ahead here. You're just like listing all of these important bullet points that, um, you know, like, so first off, you're saying responsibility. Oh, yeah. That's a big one. Big is, one. He's learning responsibility and being account- accountable to other people, but... I wanted to pause and say that is dignifying to him, mm-hmm. right? There's the sense of he, yeah, there's the, the hard part of it and you got to put in the hours and you got to do the hard work and you got to take on responsibility and you're held accountable. But all of that is dignifying. So there's a sense of we're seeing him experience the dignity of work, right? Okay, now you can move on. I know you want to move fast through this, Aaron. <laughs> But then uh, you were just talking about the value of money. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know, it's good that he's earning money. There's, and he's learning the value. It's, uh, it's a natural incentive in our yeah. world. And, and so now there's a whole aspect of he's earning money. He's connecting work with money, mm-hmm. which is a good thing. Yeah. Right? And this is biblical as well. The Apostle Paul says, hey, you don't work, you don't eat. So there's a very fundamental <laughs> aspect of this. But, uh, but then there's, okay, then what do you do with that money? Yeah. And so one of the things that Jonah has wanted to do is he's wanted to buy an e-bike. Now, e-bikes can be pretty expensive. And so I'm like, I'm not going to just fork out the money for the e-bike for him. Uh, I want him to learn a lesson through this. Okay, so let's say, and he's been looking at e-bikes, and I'm like, oh my gosh, the prices are crazy. You know, you can pay 1000 1500 2000 more for an e-bike. So we're looking at used e-bikes. So he's been looking at stuff that's between the... And there's a particular e-bike he wants. 
that's supposed to be a good one and he's done some research on it but that bike used is going to cost anywhere between a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars and so i said okay jonah well you're going to have you're going to have to contribute the majority of that and so now he's working and he's got this goal of saving up enough money uh, then we'll contribute his, uh, you know, some family is going to contribute for his birthday this month. And, but he's going to do the lion's share and think about how dignifying that is. Think about the value he will then learn uh, about work and money. And then also how dignifying it will be when he accomplishes that. <laughs> then there's the lesson of delayed gratification. Okay, I have to work multiple weeks, couple of months through the summer to get enough money for this thing. So he's got a delay gratification. He doesn't get that thing right now. Even if mom and dad could write the, you know, I guess write the check. That's an old, no one writes checks anymore. No. Even if mom and dad could Venmo the money, <laughs> right, to that person, <laughs> there's value in not doing that. Yes. Because, uh, you know, because that he gets to see the value of hard work, the connection with money. Mm -hmm. the natural incentives and all the dignity that comes from that. Yeah. I was thinking too, one day I was driving him to work and, and he, he was running late. And so he was cutting it close and he's kind of stressing and the light turned yellow. And then like, obvious, it, it was obvious I wasn't going to make it through. And I'm, I'm a aggr not aggressive driver. Yes. I'm an effective driver. No, no, no. Let's driver. be clear. The <laughs> kids have literally said, Mom, you're an aggressive driver. Well, they used the wrong word. I'm an effective <laughs> driver. So yellow doesn't necessarily mean slow down if you can make it through. But anyway, so I, I stop and, and it turned red. And it, I totally would have run a red light had I kept going. And he's like, Mom, no, you got to go through those. And I'm like, son, if... <laughs> If I get a ticket for a red light and I said, actually, okay, if I get a ticket for a red light, it would be two weeks of your pay at baseball camp to pay for that ticket. So if you're going to tell me you run a red light, then I'm going to, you're going to pay for the ticket. And he's like, two weeks of pay. And I go, yeah, that's how much a red light ticket is. And now he's making a connection to money and how much things cost. And then he's like, oh, uh, oh, that would be terrible. Oh gosh, don't do it. You know? <laughs> and so it's teaching him all kinds of things. All of a yeah. sudden now money has a lot of value because there's something he wants. And when I tell him how much something else would cost, it's like eye opening to him because now mm. money is, it, it takes work. He, so yeah, it's, and, and you know, it's, there's that cliche, right? Money doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> well, you know, you can say that and your kids will just roll their eyes. Yeah. Now he's experiencing it for himself. Because yeah. they feel like it does grow on trees because it just comes out of our wallets and, and you know, they just get the things they yeah, want. Yeah, and he sees mom pulling it out of my wallet all the time. <laughs> oh, my word. And so he's like, he, 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 he said to me, Dad, <laughs> money grows on you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I was thinking too, just uh, as a last, last point on this. So he's 12 and we found this opportunity for him to work, which is unique for a, a 12 year old. But, um, our, our son, Micah was reminding me that he started working that young too. And it was at church. And that mm. has made me think, oh yeah. I mean, there are so many things because of child labor laws, you know, kids cannot get official jobs at Chick-fil-A or whatever at, at certain ages. Because Chick-fil-A is where all the Christian kids were. Of course. Just, that's why that's you mentioned goal. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but a 10-year-old, 11-year-old, 12-year-old, 8, 9-year-old, I mean, maybe they can get a job um, watching the neighbor's dog while they're out of town or taking trash cans out. Or my, my nephews in Colorado have a little lawn mowing job with some buddies and they mow the lawns of neighbors and they're mm -hmm. making some money and they do snow plow in the winter. Our kids have done like the classic lemonade stand mm -hmm. and then they've offered baked goods. They've done car washing and people in our church have paid them to wash their cars. And I have a good friend whose son started a business cleaning trash cans in the neighborhood. There are so many things and 
oftentimes it's just kind of looking around you Mm -hmm. for girls babysitting is an awesome job that's how our 17 year old makes most of her money boys can't babysit is it wouldn't that be a sexist (laughs) comment that you just made well in general, girls are going to be the babysitter. You're not there, suggesting there are diff- there are not differences between men and women. No, I believe you? in equality for men and women. <laughs> equality across the board. Right, sure you do. So yeah, but I mean, <laughs> boys could babysit too, um, but typically it's going to be girls who are more tend towards nurturing and okay, so and can help with little kids. But anyway, so think outside the box of thing. Maybe there's people in your church or in your family that own a small business and they mm. let your kids come and sweep yeah. and make five bucks and oh, yeah. something like that. So just, I remember when I was, I mean, I was like, I think 14 years old, couldn't have get an official job, but we had a guy at our church who hired us to weed his uh, commercial properties yeah. and me and a buddy, we would do that and, <laughs> and get paid. So there's so many options yeah. out there. So. Okay. So second tip is help your kid get a job. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we sit, and again, we word these things carefully, help your kid get a job. Don't necessarily do it for them mm-hmm. again. You know? Yeah. I arranged for you to go, go work at the, for, you know, a oh. guy at church or something, but invite them into the process. Like, yeah. Hey, what about looking for some opportunities to earn some money? Yeah. And, and even, in, but in that also guiding them, maybe guiding them to do things they wouldn't necessarily want to do. Cause I didn't necessarily want to weed, mm-hmm. you know, on the weekends when I was a, a freshman in high school, <laughs> but there were other reasons to do that. Yeah. Okay. Third tip. Uh, third random tip. Yes. Use summer as a significant time for discipleship with your kids. And in particular, uh, th- this has been prompted by m- Some of my speaking recently over the last month, uh, I have done uh, speaking for Impact 360 and their summer student experiences, their summer student camps. They call them Propel. They have two one-week camps called Propel and then a two-week worldview camp called Immersion. I've also done stuff with Summit Ministries going and speaking at their two-week worldview student conferences. And then Maven has done... uh, in. In fact, at the time of the recording of this podcast, we've got a group of students who are in Utah on our open enrollment immersive experience. Which our 17-year-old mm-hmm. is on the trip. So we we and, actually live this stuff out. Yeah, too. and we she also she also stuff. went to Impact 360's Propel oh, yeah, Camp. This summer, yeah. So there's been two <laughs> significant weeks for her mm-hmm. of discipleship. And that is just, I think part of the my thought here is that uh, discipleship has got to be intentional. Here you have this time where they're off of school. Uh, school is, is such a busy time of year. There's sports, there's activities, and everything else. And so take advantage of some of the downtime of summer, where some of that stuff is gone, and now you have a significant opportunity, and you have significant allies. Now, of course, all of this what we've specifically mentioned here, these three organizations, Maven, Impact, and 360. And Maven, Impact, 360, and you said Impact and 360. Oh, yeah. Maven, <laughs> Impact, 360, and Summit. Uh-huh. Uh, those three organizations, number one, are fantastic organizations. We give a full endorsement to all of those. So there you go. You have... Uh, Maven approved uh, organizations. <laughs> we approve our Which own is one trips. of our own. Yeah. <laughs> Maven approves of Maven. I mean, if that wasn't clear. But <laughs> then, uh, but what, oh gosh, I, I just lost my train of thought. What was I saying? It was so, it was so important. Um, oh no, I, I, I think what I was going to say is, hey, these are for high school students. These are for freshmen and up and for, for high school and even college students as well. And so those specific resources are going to be for older kids, but don't just wait till they're older. I mean, think about using summer as a significant time for discipleship, even for your young ones. Mm -hmm. And so that might be something you have to develop on your own or, or maybe get some parents together uh, or taking advantage of the VBS program at your, you know, your local church, whatever it is, being intentional, planning for some significant discipleship opportunities and making this a high value thing. So look, family and vacations, those are important. Summer's a great opportunity for those. Well, what about also 
maybe having just a as much of a priority on the discipleship of your kids in the summer as you do for summer vacations. Mm-hmm. Because I think it's just just doing these events, being in, be able to interact with students, being able to signi- give them significant teaching and worldview and culture and theology and scripture and apologetics, uh, and these kids soaking in it for a week or two weeks is a significant moment. And these can be significant times of spiritual growth for your kids. So don't let summer pass you by on this. Yeah, and I would say if your kids are younger, not able to do the trips yet, start talking to, especially if you have a junior higher, that, oh, once you get in high school, you're going to do these trips and just set the expectation that they know, oh, this is going to be part of high school. Or the Summit the summit Ministries two-week one, it goes up to 24, 25-year-olds, so, so even into college they can do it. But just to start talking to your kids about, oh, no, this will just be part of what our family does. It's, yeah. it's become a part of our family's culture. The four out of our five kids who have been old enough to do these things have all done them, mm. and they knew they were just going to do it <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no and matter what. The open enrollment, the Maven open enrollment immersive experience, uh, that's something that we plan to do every summer. Uh, and some some of you might be thinking, okay, well, this summer's halfway over. Okay, start thinking about next summer. In fact, I would encourage you, if you are a listener to this podcast and you're not on the Maven email list, go to our homepage, maventruth.com. Scroll to the bottom. Uh, there's a place for you to put your name uh, and your email address. Get on our list because we send out resources on a regular basis, but we will also be announcing the dates for the open enrollment trip uh, later this summer uh, for 2025. And this year, the trip filled up. We ran out of spots for this year's trip. And so, uh, you know, you, you got to be on it. I know Impact 360, go to their website. Mm-hmm. Their camps fill up immediately as well. Summit stuff fills up. So you got to be intentional. So if you're like, oh, I missed it this summer, that's okay. Start planning for next summer. Mm -hmm. And those are three, maybe not so random tips (laughs) to help parents uh, in the discipleship of their kids. Maven exists to help the next generation know truth, pursue goodness, and create beauty for the cause of Christ. To find out more, check out maventruth.com.